Where uh, is that? Uh. Aha! Light! I can see again. Now we're ready to record. What's the topic this time? Yes, that's right. Noah has requested the sun. Okay, Noah, this one's for you. The sun is a star. It's the only star in our solar system. When we talk about the solar system, solar, the root for the word solar is soul referring to a sun or a star. So our solar system is all of those things revolving or orbiting around our local star or local sun. We call it the sun. Our solar system is part of a greater network called the Milky Way galaxy. It's a galaxy. The reason it's called Milky Way is because when you look up in the sky in a dark place at night, it looks like Mm, this kind of creamy, milky splash through the middle of the sky. It looks like milk, so they call it the Milky Way. What you're really seeing is just a part of the Milky Way galaxy. So the Milky Way galaxy is a spin wheel galaxy, and it spirals out. Well, you're only seeing the narrow part of it. We can't go out and zoom out and see it from its side, where it looks like a disk. We see it from inside of ourselves, inside of our own galaxy. So we just see a narrow strip. Inside the Milky Way galaxy are billions of stars. Well, these stars, including our sun, use hydrogen as fuel. Hydrogen is a gas. Hydrogen is all over the universe. In fact, there's more hydrogen than any other element. It is the most common element in our universe. The larger stars in our galaxy burn through hydrogen faster. Our sun, our local star, has about 5 billion years worth of hydrogen left. Uh, according to their calculations, that is. I don't know how they came up with that, but uh, eh, they might be off by 100 million years or so. To put that into perspective, if we were to walk a million miles every day, it would take us almost 14 years to walk 5 billion miles. So 5 billion years is a long time. Our sun is 93 million miles away from Earth. The perfect distance. If it were closer or farther away, it would be disaster. If we were closer, we would burn to death. If we were farther away, we would freeze to death. We are at the perfect distance. By the way, there are so many precise factors that go into where we live on Earth that make us able to thrive. It is no coincidence. It is by design. We'll come back to that. Our sun, again, our local star, is a medium-sized star, by the way. It's not very large. It's not the smallest. It is definitely not the largest. It has a radius. That means from the middle to the outside of 432,000 miles or about 700,000 kilometers. If you were to go all the way around the sun, it's 1.39 million kilometers, or 864,000 miles. That is a lot bigger than our Earth. So here's a question for you. If you were to take our planet Earth and try to fit it in the sun, how many of our planet Earths could fit inside the sun? And the answer is about one million three hundred thousand Earths. That's a lot. Our whole solar system is moving through the universe at an average speed of about 450,000 miles per hour or 720 kilometers per hour. And even though we're moving fast, we don't really feel it because we're just on the planet moving. It still takes us about 230 million years to complete one orbit around the Milky Way. Go ahead. See if you can count that high for 230 million years. One, two, three, four, The sun does something five, remarkable. Six, it rotates seven, as it orbits the Milky Way's center. Nine, Since ten. the sun isn't a solid 
object. Different parts of it rotate at different speeds. At the equator of the sun, the sun spins once every 25 days, while at its poles, it spins slower on its axis every 35 days. So how unusual is that? The equator is spinning faster, or the outside of the sun is spinning faster than the inside. The sun does something remarkable. It provides all the energy for life on Earth. It provides energy photosynthesis, which is plant food, and that also brings oxygen. So because of the sun's energy, plants give us oxygen. And, and the more you think about that, the more amazing it is. It also provides light. Obviously, it provides light so we can see. Just like earlier, I couldn't see where I was going to switch on the light. Once the light was on, it was so much better. Life without light would be, well, it would be impossible without our sun to begin with. But even if we could live and not die from the cold and lack of plant food and all the rest, it would be mostly miserable. Basketball? Good luck. Fishing? You'd probably get a hook in your eye. Ouch! Painting? Maybe finger painting could work, but you wouldn't even know what colors you're using. Nothing would... Nothing would... It would just be terrible. Let's think about that 5 billion years. Our sun has about 5 billion years. That's obviously not going to affect us in our lifetime. But what happens when our sun runs out? That question doesn't bother me in the least. The reason that doesn't bother me is because we have something more to live for. It's because the sun is not the center of my universe. It's really God. He is the one who's really taking care of us. He's just using the sun. He can keep it going or turn it off whenever he wants. He is going to provide for us what we need when we need it. It is no coincidence that our planet is the exact distance from the sun that we need. It didn't just happen. It was by design. We were designed to live and thrive here. There are far, far, far too many miracles that need to line up exactly for us to exist that it's just no accident. It's no coincidence. Mathematically, it is impossible that we are alive, that there is human life. We do not live a purposeless existence. We were designed to love and be loved, to belong, discover, and grow. Your life, no matter who you are or where you live, has meaning and purpose. In the Bible it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. That's from Jeremiah 29.11. So don't worry about the sun. There is someone behind it all who is taking care of us. We were designed. He put us the exact spot away from the sun where we need to be to have life. It is no coincidence. We have a God of love who knows how to take care of us. Now we have a mystery sound. It's been a long time since we've had a mystery sound. And uh, here it is. What does that sound like to you? Find out on our next episode. I'm Moose Jawmat. Until next time, keep exploring your world.